What is going on hunters? I'm Helix101 and welcome back to another edition of Helix's Wild Hunts. First off, before we begin today's episode, I just want to say a big thank you to all of you. Uh, the first episode was a huge success on my channel and I just wanted to really thank you guys for enjoying the episode and commenting and giving me so much feedback and tips and solutions that I didn't even know about the game. So, uh, and we're going to go over some of those too because I think it's very important that I address some of them as well. Also, uh, some minor issues uh, with the recording the game. I'm not too sure why it's happening. It's actually only happened so far with Monster Hunter Online. Any of the other games that I've played before, uh, this has never happened. But anytime that I'm recording with Audacity and having this game running, I get the weird audio popping sound. So I do apologize, guys. I really want to get this fixed. And if any of you know a solution or have had tried recording Monster Hunter Online have had similar issues, please let me know what you did to resolve the issue. Or if there is a fix out there that I'm not well aware, I tried Googling it, but I can find it anything. Now, in terms of the previous episode, uh, we actually went hunting for the Velocidrome, not the Geodrome, and uh, here is actually how the Geodrome looks. As you can see, it's definitely a little bit lighter in color and also has a blue Mohawk instead of the red one. Uh, we actually hunted the Velocidrome last episode, so thanks guys for uh, letting me know in the comments that I actually hunted the Velocidrome instead of the Geodrome, but I think he is in this game. We'll find out, I guess, as we progress through the monster hunts. The other thing too that someone pointed out in the comments was that there is a lock-on feature and I didn't know about this. I actually was not aware that there was a lock-on feature until I tested it out and if you're playing with a controller, if you actually hit R2, it actually locks onto the monster. I think the camera only, so you still have to kind of rely on lining up your attacks and making sure that they land. So just thought I would mention that. So for this episode, we're actually going to be hunting down two classic monsters from previous Monster Hunter games. One of them is the Boldrome, and that's going to be actually our first hunt here. And last night, I actually managed to unlock a fan favorite, the Yan Kutku. So we're going to be hunting him down after we finish taking down the Boldrome. So let's get hunting. Alright guys, so we're in the new map now to hunt the Bulldrome. Actually, this is the, not the first time I've tried this map. Last night I got a chance to play it with a few of my friends, which was a lot of fun. My buddy Keto and James from the Let's Play community. Alright, so it uh, looks like we found the Bulldrome. And as you see on my back, I'm actually going to be trying out the Greatsword, since a lot of you actually were requesting different alternate weapons to see in different episodes. So I'm going to try this one today. Let's tag him. Wow, I'm surprised he didn't notice me. I was just like right there. Now, one of the main benefits of the Great Sword is that it has a charge feature. So, unlike the Sword and Shield, you actually get to charge if you get an opening. Even while you're running and going right into the unsheathing your weapon, you can actually get a really strong hit if you manage to get a full charge and swing in. Another great thing, too, about the Great Sword is that you can actually use it as a shield, just like you saw there. I mean, it does take a little bit of damage off of you, but it, at least it's better than taking the full hit there if you're uh, stuck with the weapon out. Now, in the other episode, I also mentioned how it's very important to sheathe your weapon before you start running around and trying to get back to the monster, especially since you see how this one is running around a lot and you're trying to catch up to him. Oh, no! <laughs> and especially with the greatsword, the problem with it is that when you have it unsheathed, it has a lot of weight to it. So the problem is that you start walking really slow. Oh, we got to uh, knock him down a little bit here. I'm going to try to get a good hit. Boom. This is actually one of the first starter monsters in this game, so if you're looking to figure out the mechanics and uh, learn how to fight, this is a really good one to figure out. One thing I did notice though last night when uh, I was playing with my friends is it looks like they emitted the ability to hit people. Oh, I got hit by that. Hit people with the launch mechanic with the greatsword. Oh, got to dodge here. Got to dodge. So I'm going to show you the launch mechanic here. It's this move right there. Oh, okay. He launched me, though. <laughs> Normally, in the other Monster Hunters, you were actually able to knock friends into the air, and sometimes it became really annoying because you're trying to make sure that you're not caught out of a combo when you got a good combo going on against the monster. But I tried doing that last night with my buddy Keto, and nothing seemed to happen. So I don't know if they just removed that feature or capability in this game. Uh, I keep missing a lot. I think he's running away now. Perfect. Gives me a chance to heal. Actually, I'm going to carve this monster and see if I could actually cook some meat too, just to show you guys how you can get 
different stamina rejuvenating items that, that help increase your bar. I don't know if I got a piece of meat here. Let's check the inventory. Yes! Alright, so I'm going to show you how to cook meat. I know, so exciting. And tasty! I love this jingle because it reminds me of every single Monster Hunter game. I'm not gonna mess this up. Ah! Woo! Almost messed it up. I pressed the wrong button for a second there. It almost got burnt. That's okay. Let's go fight the monster again. Woo! Then we go to the next part of the map. Where is he? Ah, there he is. He definitely didn't miss me. Definitely didn't miss me. He's gonna go down pretty fast after a few of these hits. Oh, wow. I was really hoping that I was would have stunned him a little bit there, but I guess not. Dodge! Okay, now I gotta... I gotta sharpen up my weapon. Gotta make sure that he doesn't charge after me! Oh, he's gonna hit me. He's gonna hit me! Or not. Alrighty then, so I guess I did not have to worry about him hitting me at all. Oh, 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 I'm gonna get hit. Oh! I won! Woo! Oh, that was a lucky hit at the end there. He was getting ready to hit me. So that's the Bulldrome. Very, very simple fight. And again, a very familiar monster in a lot of the other Monster Hunter games. Actually, I don't think I've seen him in uh, some of the more recent games. I think he was only in Freedom Unite, if I'm not mistaken. Again, you guys have given me a wealth of knowledge of information from other Monster Hunter games that I had no idea about, so please keep letting me know if I say something wrong or mess up something. I am more than happy to correct myself. I am not, uh... <laughs> I'm not ashamed to, to say that I will make some mistakes when I talk about this game, but hopefully that doesn't happen too often. All right, so we got the best rating, and I think we got a uh, Boldrum head, the skin, the fang. I think that's a bone. I'm not too sure. It might be uh, some kind of body part, but we'll see. And let's see what we get here. Uh, I don't know what that blue thing is. All right. All right, guys, before I go hunt the Yan Kutku, I wanted to show you guys a very important NPC in this game. And like many other games, you want to make sure that you know where you can craft your new sets of armor and weapons. And that NPC is Groose from Skyward Sword. <laughs> and if you want to make sure that you are selecting the crafting option, it is the second option at the, like, it's not the top one here because I think you just buy weapons and armor that way, but here you actually can craft. And as you can see, it's like other Monster Hunter games. It shows you the weapon, gives you a little preview. Uh, you can actually get a chance to see what kind of materials are required, even though I can't tell what some of them are, I kind of get an idea what I might need. And over here on this side, it's the armor. You actually get to try it on like the other games too, so you get to see how it looks. Ooh, this is a new piece of armor that I just got ready. I guess, uh, huh. Alrighty. Well, I guess this is for the Yan Kutku, so I'm gonna look like a cowboy after. Alright, so our next hunt is the Yan Kutku. He's actually one of my favorite monsters because he was actually the very first monster I ever took down because I tried the Monster Hunter Freedom Unite demo before I actually bought the game. And he was one of the monsters you got to fight. He was actually the only large monster you got to fight. I think afterwards it was just uh, small monsters that you could play around in a map. Alright, so from the looks of it here, this looks like it is... Um, I'm trying to remember the name of it. It's not the flash bomb. It's the one that does a sound explosion. <laughs> you guys are going to hate me for not being able to name this right now, and I'm hating myself a little bit. But the Yan Cuckoo has very sensitive ears, and you can actually use it to stun him a little bit. So I'm going to take advantage of that. I can only take three at a time. And got to make sure we have our provisions. And I'm also just going to make sure that I move this into my blocks here. Perfect. Alright, so now we are ready to go find ourselves a Yan Kutku. Alright guys, so we found the Yan Kutku, and I guess there's no little fun introduction for him. I think there's only one for the Kaser Bear so far. Yeah, yeah he just clipped through the... Oh no, he's gonna fly away! No, don't do it! Don't do it! I just found you! Alright, let's get a good first hit in. Boom! Oh, he almost, he almost hit me. Okay, watch this. Alright, so I'm gonna use... 
He likes to trip over himself a lot. I'm gonna use this right now to stun him a little bit. Perfect. It's gonna give me a good hit right now. Actually, I might be able to get a few good hits. One more hit, one more hit, come on! Boom! So I got two good hits out of that just from using that, but I don't think right now during uh, his rage mode, as you can see there's a little bit of fire coming out of his mouth, if you try to use the, the sound explosion, it's actually going to not do anything, so you don't want to waste them while he's like this. You might as well just try to attack him when you can. Oh, here he is shooting some fireballs. Maybe I can trip him a little bit here. Nope. It's good to see that the hitboxes uh, for my, my character aren't as uh, broken as in Monster Hunter Freedom Unite. A lot of times when Yan Cuckoo would rush at you like that, instead of just running underneath you, he would give you a nice little hit no matter where you are. It does make the game a little bit easier compared to the other games, but that's okay. Oh, okay, never mind. That definitely hit me, and it actually took a decent amount of health off. Now, in the previous episode, I mentioned during one of the fights that you want to try to keep your weapon sharpened. Oh, no! Ugh. You want to try to keep your weapon sharpened to avoid damage reduction, but as actually one of the other commenters pointed out to me that I didn't know about, um, Gaijin Hunter actually, I guess, debunk the fact or the myth that you have to keep it sharpened to actually get some good damage on it. Uh oh, I think he's flying away. It'll still do similar damage. The only difference is that you'll be bouncing off the monster and it makes it really annoying because then you kind of lose the ability to do some constant combo attacks. It just l makes it so that you're kind of stuck bouncing off like a dunce on the monster. Alright, so it looks like he's flown over to zone 6. Maybe I can get him again with... Why can't I think of the name of that bomb? <laughs> Guys, I can't get over the fact of how good this game looks. Like, the fact that I'm hunting a Yan Cuckoo in, in this style of, of graphics, it just makes me feel so happy. I know we're capable of breaking apart his ears, but I haven't... Oh, whoops, I don't know why I rolled into that. I don't think we can cut off his tail. I don't think he has a big enough tail to cut off compared to some of the other monsters that we're going to be fighting later down the road. Yo, gotta heal! No! Oh, dodge that one! Whew! Uh oh, I'm not gonna dodge this one. I got it! Burned! Alright, so, as you can see, I'm on fire for a little bit. I've rolled in the water. A little bit of water there to cool myself off. Okay, maybe I can get a good charge hit here. Oh, he's limping. Okay, so this is the first time we've actually got a chance to see this, but monsters that take enough damage will start limping like this and try to fly to recover at some nest or some place in the map. So maybe we can take him out. We'll, let's see if we can. No, he's gonna fly away. Alright, we're gonna have to follow him and see where he goes. Bye, Yan Cuckoo. Where are you going? I guess over here is his... Oh, no, never mind. Okay, so... The quickest way to get there would be just going from the zone 3, so let's just go over there and finish him off. As you can see, he's sleeping, and I'm gonna give him a very rude awakening here. Oh, cat, please don't hit him yet. Boom! And that is a successful hunt of the Yan Cuckoo. Now, I see him glowing, and I've noticed this a lot recently, too, while I've been playing this game, is that carvable monsters have a little glowing aura around them, and I kind of don't like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out in the settings, I think there is a way to shut that off so it's just like traditional Monster Hunter, but I hope you guys don't mind for now for these two hunts. Let's get a nice victory picture here. Let's see if this works. And I took a picture of that hunt for you guys. Nice. That is a very cool final blow shot. I really like that one. I wish these were stored somewhere. They might be, but then again, I might not know. Not bad, not bad. We didn't get the best ranking, probably because I took a few hits. And we got some pieces of the Yen Cuckoo. I think this is the Yen Cuckoo ears. Scales, probably. Oh no, that's, 
I think that scales. I'm not sure what that piece is, and that's fangs, so... And hopefully we'll get something good here. Uh, more, I think that's just more uh, scales for the Yankuku. Alright guys, so that wraps up another two successful hunts. I hope you're still enjoying this series. Keep commenting below, let me know anything that I might be doing wrong, or names, or monster names that I'm saying completely incorrectly. And hopefully down the road we'll also figure out a way to resolve this audio popping problem. Again, it's only ever happened with Monster Hunter, I don't know why it's happening. So please, please let me know guys, very important. I wish you all happy hunting, and I'll see you all on the next level.